the Internet of Things in the automotive industry and beyond. For our next keynote, I'd like to introduce Member of Parliament, Dr. Miriam Dalli. Thank you and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here to speak about something which is revolutionizing the way that we are living now. It's not about the future, it's about the present that we are experiencing and living today. And you are here and I am here because we honestly believe in change. But we look at change as an opportunity. We don't look at change as something that we would like to resist or something that brings with it only challenges. We believe that change is happening, but we believe that there are opportunities that we can take from those changes. But to actually exploit those opportunities, we require speedy action. We need to take action, and we need to take action immediately. It means also that disruption to traditional business models cannot linger. But to do that, we need the proper investments. We need the proper investments channeled to the right place. To do that, we need a vision. We need innovation. And if there is one industry where change is happening, and it is happening fast, where innovation can give us so much positive results, I believe it is the automotive industry. It is all about Industry 4.0. I'm sure you heard a lot about Industry 4.0, about digitization, about automation. But I would like to bring into the formula something else, the ecological aspect as well. Because if there is one conclusion that is long foregone, it is that old certainties are long gone. I will bring to the fore the result of a survey that was carried out by Protolabs Europe. A survey that was carried out amongst professionals that work in the automotive industry. From all respondents, the result was that 71% of stakeholders involved in the automotive industry believed that Industry 4.0 was needed and digital processes were needed for them if they wanted to survive in this ever-changing industry. Now, let me give a couple of numbers, mobility in numbers. Just think about mobility today. Now think again. Think about how mobility would look in the future, just in the years to come. And the landscape is already changing. Here are just some statistics. 56% expect consumers to share vehicles, not buy vehicles, in the next couple of years. Another stat. 52% believe that an iconic car manufacturer will go out of business in the next three years. Another 52% believe that in the next three years, there will be a new car manufacturer that will come into the market with a totally new concept of a vehicle. And 61% say that their business need to urgently adopt and have a different approach to innovation. Which begs the question, are car manufacturers today, particularly in Europe and the European Union, prepared to innovate and change their business model? The business model that they have worked on in the past years. So it's all about innovation. It's about staying ahead of the curve it's about upgrading, it's about innovating the processes that we have been accustomed to for too long. 
And the world is changing fast. And it will not slow down in the coming years. It is even predicted that the industry will change more in the next five years than it had done in the last 50 years. And investing in the right technology is what will keep car manufacturers abreast of these developments. So the traditional model of doing things has to really change, which means car manufacturers need to divert their investment from the good old combustion engine to more research and innovation. They need to direct investment to attract people who have a vision and who believe in that vision. People who are capable of coming up with new ideas and implement those ideas. I call them the futurists and the unconventional thinkers. We need so much more of young people who actually have an idea and are willing to put that idea into practice. And if I had to look at the European Union, I see so many young people with innovative ideas who, however, many times are being blocked by people with older ideas or more conservative ideas who really can't think outside the box or outside what they have been accustomed to. This means that we have people, even in our country, with a progressive vision. And those people must come to the fore. They must be given the space and the opportunity to take the lead. Because ultimately, thriving in today's world depends on our ability to identify an opportunity, to think differently, and most importantly, to shift our focus rapidly. People, their behavior, their expectations are constantly changing. And any business owner, any car manufacturer needs to address those changes. Let's speak about current social trends. Because current social trends are showing that consumers are drastically reassessing what they look for in a vehicle. If before they were looking at owning a vehicle, now they are more interested in actually accessing a vehicle. And that change will continue to happen also in the years to come. That's why we need to make sure that car manufacturers don't look only at investing in the old technology, but also look at investing in electrification, in digitization, and in automation. IoT in the mobility sector can make a lot of difference. People need solutions if they, for example, need to commute in pedestrianized cities where parking space is scarce, where they have diesel bans, where traffic jams are increasing. Motorists during the past years wasted billions searching for a parking spot, for example. And let me mention a study that was carried out. Traffic data aggregator INRIX concluded that drivers in United States cities spend on average $345 a year in lost time and wasted fuel. Now, if we had to come to our continent, in the European Union, the costs for UK motorists are an extra 733 pounds, and in Germany, it costs them 896 euros, which is wasted because you have drivers looking out for parking spots, they're wasting fuel, and they're wasting also their time. And to address this situation, IoT is the solution. We have modern cars. They have fixed GPS devices, they have navigation, they have the ability to connect the owner to the car. But they can also indicate, for example, available parking spots. They can indicate where traffic jams can be avoided. And we already have cities that have CCTV feeds that help overcome bottlenecks 
in traffic, for example, by transmitting data to traffic management centers. And let's face it, if we have better organized traffic systems, that would mean a better flow of traffic, it would mean less road time, it would mean less fuel consumption, and ultimately it would mean also less emissions on our roads and also a better air quality. So since I'm speaking about the environment, we're just a few months shy of 2020. But let me give you a quick picture of mobility in the 2020. It is estimated that in 2020, there will be 1.1 billion vehicles in the world's roads. And most of those are powered by fossil fuel. They generate between themselves 14% of the world's exhaust fumes and emissions. And now I'm sure you agree with me that consumers today are becoming more aware of their environmental impact. And I'm sure that automotive companies will continue feeling the pressure to address that awareness and make sure that they deliver not only on paper, but they deliver on our roads. It means that the sale of zero and low emission vehicles, including also electric vehicles, but not excluding other technologies, will definitely increase in the years to come. The European Union, from its end, has also given a policy direction which should help this uptake of zero low emission vehicles. Recently, the European Union approved a legislation to reduce CO2 emissions from passenger vehicles and low commercial vehicles. And I'm convinced more than ever before that technology will play a vital role in this regard. It will provide data on driving patterns and it will provide data also on fuel emission patterns. Now let's look at IoT from a different perspective. And let's speak about predictive maintenance. So IoT has the potential to help automakers, and I would say even drivers, keep their costs down. You have a constellation of computer chips and sensors placed through a connected vehicle that can collect performance data, which then can predict when a part in that vehicle might require maintenance. And it was found that when you have this predictive maintenance, costs go down both for automakers and also for the drivers themselves. Because predictive model can alert a driver before issues actually develop. And that will catch potential failures ahead of time, and thus saving any extra courses in the process. Let's speak also about safety. We all want to use a vehicle which is safe. We all want to walk in roads and use roads that are safe. And as technology allows vehicles to communicate better with one another, accident rates should also go down. Insurers use IoT to monitor and also to understand driving habits. And this could lead to lower insurance rates for certain good drivers, but also safer roads for everyone. And when you have a vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, that is when you can see results in traffic accidents, in diminishing and decreasing traffic accidents. Because vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle com communication can avert traffic accidents from happening. You have vehicles that would communicate with the other vehicles behind them, for example, when they monitor and they realize that there is a strange driving behavior that otherwise can lead to an accident. Now, is it all pos positive? Like in any other situation, we will always have challenges. Challenges that we need to address by having the proper regulatory framework. I'm sure that, for example, yesterday we were speaking about driverless cars. Driverless cars are coming. But we need to make sure that we have the proper regulation 
to regulate driverless cars to make sure that we will not see a counter effect on emissions, for example. A survey that I was just going through before I came here shows that if we do not have the proper regulation for driverless cars, that can mean an increase of 40% in CO2 emissions, something which I'm sure no one wants to see happening. So, other challenges that we need to address. We need to have the proper framework to make sure that we prevent situation where a car is vulnerable to hackers. It will challenge the safety of a vehicle and its drivers, something that we as policymakers need to make sure to address. Connected vehicles will drive the maximum benefit in connected cities. So we need to make sure that we have connected cities which can ensure that the maximum benefit of a connected car is reaped. Now, connecting every car in every city will definitely push the limits of our technological abilities. And this connection can only be rolled out through national investments and visionary policies, something which, yes, can happen. Automated IoT is definitely not without its privacy concerns. You have car manufacturers, they will control the data of the drivers, and consumers need to make sure that they are well educated on the consequences. At least if we had to look at the European Union, we have the GDPR, which can provide protection to such consumers. But most importantly, we need to have the vision to break the traditional model of doing things. And I would say that the traditional industrial and also business models will no longer work across the board. Now, although automotive firms will continue to sell vehicles, other initiatives may be required to supplement their main business stream. And some companies are already doing that because some companies are realizing that consumers might not want to buy a car, but they are willing to share a car. They are willing to simply access the services a vehicle has to offer. And it is expected in the years to come that more consumers will move towards car sharing and also towards ride hailing services. So I would say in front of us, we have a massive opportunity. Technological advancements and also IoT present us with a one-time opportunity for our generation. But to ensure the maximum potential of this opportunity, we require the right people with the right ideas at the right time and at the right place. It means that countries, industries and businesses that do not keep up with the pace will lose out during the whole process. I'm convinced. In the next 10 years, the mobility model that we have today will no longer survive. In the next 10 years, the concept of mobility will be totally different from what we know today. It means that the solutions of tomorrow are needed today, and we must start thinking differently. We need to have a vision of where we want to go. We need to have an infrastructure based on vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle connection, vehicle-to-grid connection, vehicle-to-person connection. Consumers will want more electric vehicles, and they will want more driverless cars. And car makers and lawmakers should respond to those changes. It means that car makers need to change their model of investing or sinking billions into the old combustion engine and think beyond the ICE technology. Lawmakers should move away from thinking and coming up with solutions that just fit in the current framework of doing things. We need to think outside the box and we need to keep in mind that yes, the future is with us now and things will change and we need to address those changes through our infrastructure. So my conclusion is that business as usual will definitely not work. And reluctancy to change will reap no results in the longer term. And I would like to end my presentation with a call of action. A call of action 
for car makers, for lawmakers, policymakers, for consumers to embrace change and make sure that whilst addressing the challenges, we make sure that we address the opportunities that lie ahead of us. It can make our continent a leader. It can make our small island a leader. I thank you for the opportunity to connect with you. Pun totally intended there. And I look forward to meet rising leaders in IoT and to have the opportunity together with you to really deliver positive change for our island, for our continent, but most of all, for our constituents and our citizens. Thanks a lot.